What's going on YouTube OCD 3DC here? What I got for your face balls today is a knife that I am super excited about because I loved the first one and now they made it slightly larger. And I'm talking about the MBK Slayback. This thing is so freaking cool. <laughs> I was so pumped when I saw that they brought this out in the XL version. Uh, I absolutely loved the original. Uh, which was a three inch blade. And this one here is the three and a half inch blade variant. And it is absolutely right up my alley. This thing is perfect. So what are we talking about here? This is a Ray Laconico design. This is manufactured by MBK. This was uh, made in China. I'm not sure which factory, uh, but MBK has been bringing the value here as of late. I'm wanting to say the price on this guy is two and a quarter, if I remember correctly. It's either 200 or 225, one or the other. I'm pretty sure they're still in stock. And what we're looking at here is an awesome, awesome design. Titanium liner lock, which I absolutely love. And it's, it's a gorgeous knife, very simple, very similar to most Laconico designs. Uh, we just have this very nice fuller running down uh, the show side here. Uh, it's a bead blasted finish on the titanium. And the blade is this beautiful Warncliffe ZDP 189 core sand my construction. It's jacketed in 420J. It's got a satin finish and the action is fantastic. I'm confident we're going to make it better. It feels like there's a little grit in there. So we are going to disassemble this guy and check it out but you can see here that the billboarding is absolutely minimal we just have the mbk monogram style logo and then we have old ray lacanico uh, on the spine of the blade which looks fantastic and that's it nothing else on here it's beautiful uh packaging this is what you get right here it is just a uh, MBK standard uh, case. However, there are some differences on the inside, which I'm going to show you. Uh, it is, does have the green embroidery. You do get the extra hardware, which is awesome. I always love getting extra hardware. You get the little MBK cleaning cloth. You get a bag. And this particular uh, pouch has got another uh, little pocket in it. So that's fantastic gives you a place where you can put your uh, extra hardware and the little cleaning cloth that I don't ever use. But, you know, you can stuff it right in that little extra pouch right there and you're good to go. So that's what you get with the MBK Slayback XL. I can't remember if it's the Slayback XL or the XL Slayback, but either way, it's awesome. So what do we got here for dimensions? Let's take a little look, see what we're working with here. All right, overall length on the handle, 4.84 basically. Um, we've got a blade length. Let's see, I think that's right at three and a half if I recall. 3.557 inches. Let's get Blade stock thickness right at an eighth of an inch. Love to see that. Behind the edge on this ZDP 189 Sanmai blade. What do we got? About 20 thousandths. So not the thinnest behind the edge ever, but, but it's still pretty decent. You know, it's better than 25 or 30 thousandths from a lot of these manufacturers. Love the eighth inch blade stock. But something that's super impressive here is the thinness of this guy. Look at that, under four tenths of an inch, 0.397. So for a, a you know fairly good sized knife, this thing is very slim in the pocket. <clears throat> pocket clip I already know is fantastic because it's the same clip that was on the original, the small version. Uh, and this thing just works well. It, it works really well in hand. It's great in pocket. And yeah, I just, nothing to complain about here as far as I'm concerned. It's a cool knife all the way around. I love the look of it. See what we got here for a weight. 4.136 ounces. Definitely, 
definitely a good, uh, nice, lightweight, good size knife. Okay, let's take a look here. I think this is all T8. Yeah, so we got a T8 pivot. It does have some type of a D shape. It is not free spinning, which is fantastic. And I'll probably flip the pivot screw around if it's possible, just because I like to have the tooled side on the lock, lock side of the knife. Okay. So the hardware is definitely steel. Oh, holy cow. This thing just completely fell apart. Okay. There we go. Wow. Well, there's all your parts, guys. <laughs> all right. So we've got uh, two uh, standoffs right here, and they are both D-shaped, which is wonderful. Uh, we've got this little backspacer here. Let's see. How did this thing go in there? Looks like it goes just like this. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> you can see we've got some internal milling uh, going on on this titanium. We've got a little hardened steel uh, washer there. And then on the lock bar side... Yeah, all pretty simple. We've got a ceramic uh, detent ball. Again, a lot of internal milling going on here. Let me grab a paper towel. We've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of oil going on here. Okay, so you can see the D shape in that liner right there. All pretty simple stuff, really. Liner fits in just like that. I love a titanium liner lock like this. That's just, yeah. I, it's not that I really mind frame locks, but the liner lock I really enjoy. Um, you don't have to worry about where you're grabbing it on the lock side. You know, it just, it works really well. They're super functional. Um, the bearings here are quite small for a knife of this size. You know, a lot of, a lot of knives you'll see you know, double row ceramic bearings and that sort of thing. These are very, very small, um, but that's okay. They function well. So let me get these cleaned up really quick. I just want to make sure because it did feel like there was a little bit of dirt or crunchiness in here. One of the reasons why I wanted to get this thing tore apart and cleaned up. Okay. All right, let's see what we're what we've got here. So I'm gonna throw. So this is my own uh, my own grease that I'm dealing with here, and I'm gonna throw some of this on. You guys will learn more about this in the days to come. Something that I've been kind of playing around with and messing with for a little while here, and definitely have enjoyed. It's been fun and interesting. I've learned a lot dealing with, uh, with the greases and lubricants. You know, my main goal was I was going for something that, uh, wasn't going to run out and get all over the outside of a knife and kind of run around the pivot area. You know, I'd been using a couple of different types of grease and it just wasn't, uh, wasn't getting me what I wanted, if that makes any sense. Um, I had, I was putting some KPL on a micarta knife quite some time ago. And, you know, after I lubed it up, it didn't seem to matter how little lube I put on it. Um, I would always end up with a little oily spot around the pivot, even though I put hardly any on it. Um, and it was just, you know, frustrating and it was making me mad. So... I decided that I wanted to come up with something that was a grease instead of an oil, which <clears throat> I ended up buying several different, uh, different oils, um, or different greases that were currently on the market. And none of them actually gave me what I was looking for. Uh, the surface tension 
was just too high on all of the oils that I found. And so I got kind of frustrated and decided that I would just uh, make my own grease. And so out of all the greases that I found, this stuff um, just outperforms everything by quite a margin. I, I'm honestly pretty shocked at how well this stuff works. It's definitely exceeded my expectations, which is great. Okay. Like I said, you guys will learn more about it in the days to come. Uh, let's put that pin down there. Probably should have put these in first, but you know, nothing like just doing things ass backwards, right? You know, this might be kind of a pain in the ass to get together with that liner. Actually, what I'll probably do, let's see, okay. I need to turn the D shape on both of these towards the rear. And we'll throw that down. <clears throat> and now I'm going to try to put these. Oh, and then like a moron, I'm sitting here putting this together and this bearing staring me right in the face. All right, let me put a little, little slick them on the bearing here. Okay. And of course, when I try and close the blade, oh boy. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. <clears throat> These spin easily. You guys saw how much, as soon as I got the screws taken out of this thing, this whole knife just fell apart in my hands. Pretty crazy. Hopefully we can get this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Looks like we are in there. Like swimwear. So this probably would have been, probably, not probably, it would have been easier to assemble this with the pivot screw going the other direction just because of the way this knife is assembled. However, like I said, I like to have the tooled side of the pivot on the lock bar side. Okay, now we're in good shape. All right. Okay, so it's perfectly centered. Get the lube distributed. Okay, so true to form. I over tighten the pivot. Oh. Oh boy, this thing is really good. Holy cow. 
Can't beat that. We have absolutely zero blade play. I don't know if you can fail this or not. I doubt it. Yeah, nope. Man, that thing is good. Like I said, perfectly centered. So here it is, the Laconico XL Slayback or Slayback XL, one or the other from MBK. Uh, man, Sanford Owen, dude, you have been killing it here lately. Uh, I've had, you know, I don't even know, four or five MBK designs here recently, and they've all just been fantastic. The quality has been stellar. Um, the fit and finish is great. The actions have been great. The detents are dialed in and the designs are good. Like I'm just, yeah, really pumped on everything that MBK has got going on. And then, you know, Richie and Lindy, um, knife modders, they, uh, have been modding stuff up for MBK. Uh, so that's very cool as well. Love to see the work that they're doing. They're both killing it. Uh, so super exciting really awesome knife. This one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, yeah. And I will absolutely, uh, be, uh, getting intimate with this thing. And this thing is going to get a lot of pocket time for sure, because it's gorgeous. I love the, the Warren cliff blade. The ZDP 189 is awesome. Uh, sand my construction. I'm probably going to do a little mod work to this because I've got a few ideas that I think could be pretty cool, but probably won't change the design at all. I really like the, the uh, profile of this knife, just the way it is. And, you know, but we might do, do a little customizing to it just to make it uh, that much cooler. But anyway, guys, there you go. MBK XL Slayback. If you haven't picked one up, go do it because it's awesome. Thanks all. Have a good one.